One of the biggest complaints I hear from my students is that Google Analytics 4 is super confusing and just overwhelming when you're starting out as a beginner. And I'll be honest, even though I have more than 10 years of experience in digital marketing, a few years ago when GA4 launched, I was avoiding transitioning to it because it was just too much hassle. So in this quick tutorial, I will teach you the basics of Google Analytics 4. You will learn how to use the GA4 reports, what reports are useful and when to use them because you can basically ignore half of the reports in GA4, but you need to know which half. <laughs> Hello, my name is Robert and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. So let's just jump into GA4 dashboard. So this is the Google Analytics 4 dashboard and this is the demo account that Google provides. And if you want, I'll uh, leave a link to this page where you can just come here, scroll down and you click on this link, you get access to this same uh, property. Now, this is the home page and this kind of summary page of what's going on on our site. This is a nice way, but you're not going to spend that much time here. What you're going to do is go into the reports and this is where the default reports live. We have here the report snapshot, which is again kind of summary. And then you have the real time report, which basically just shows who's on your site right now and what are they doing there. If we take a go on the left, we have quite a lot of different reports, but luckily we don't need half of these because some of them are quite useless. But I'm going to show you the most important ones. And by the way, if your names are slightly different, don't worry. For example, here I have another website where it's called Generate Leads, but when you open it, it has the same reports inside. They just might be in different order because you can change the order and you can personalize this to your website. But that's more advanced and you can do that in the library section here. But in any case, if I go to this property, which are the most important reports? Well, we first off have this traffic acquisition and this just tells us what source brought the user to the site. Is that from Google search, email or just paid advertisement? So this is where you would find out about it. Then we have another one here, engagement, and I would look at pages and screens and landing pages. The landing page report just answers the question, what was the first page that the visitor saw? And pages and screens tells you what pages were visited overall. So basically, um, if I come to uh, a home page and then I go to a product page, I will be counted as one visit to home page in landing page, but uh, you will not see me as a part of the product page. However, here you will be counted as one home page and one product page. And then we have monetization under here. What's useful is the e-commerce purchases. This is where you get answers to questions like what products have been viewed, added to cart and purchased from our site. So it's really focusing on the product side. Then we have the purchase journey, which is basically uh, where do people abandon our site? Then we have checkout journey, which is basically same as purchase journey, but really focuses on the checkout uh, process. And then you have promotions where you can see how your promotions are doing on, on your site, not coupon codes, promotions in GA4 uh, just means any type of uh, promotions you have on your site, like banners and stuff like that. But you need you need to have a separate setup for that. So if uh, you just installed GA4 and nobody has installed the promotions, then you probably won't see anything in there. And then uh, retention, I would completely ignore. And then you have Search Console. This is something you can install. Uh, and then you see data from your Google Search Console. And then you have the user data here. So for example, user attributes, uh, de demographic details, like uh, the country they came from. And later on, when you set up audiences, you can see them here. And for the tech, uh, basically, you can see here what browser people use, uh, what uh, device they use. Is that a mobile device, desktop or a tablet? And this is where you could see that. But these reports, I usually take a look maybe once a year, or once in half a year. So uh, I don't use them as much. The most used ones are the traffic acquisition. Then you have landing page, pages and screens and e-commerce purchases and purchase journeys. And there's a few other reports that I also use. Uh, just so you know, these are the default reports, but you can also create your own uh, reports in the Explore. And this is a really powerful feature of GA4, but it is a little bit more advanced. I would definitely get to know first the uh, default reports. And this is just so important that I cover this in depth in one of the first modules in my GA4 for e-commerce course that is just designed for people in e-commerce who want to turn data to insights. I'll add a link to that in the description of this video. So next, let's take a look at one of the default reports so that you get a bit familiar with the interface because it's more or less the same for all of them. So I'm, I'm here now in the landing page report. And if I scroll down, I see this graph. 
and then you have the uh, table here. Now, this table is where the magic is happening. And once you understand the metrics here, so metrics are the ones where you have numbers. And then you have here dimensions. This is how they're calling it in, in GA4. Dimensions are landing pages or campaign or the source people came from. Uh, these are kind of dimensions that uh, you cannot just quantify. It's usually in text format, whereas the metrics are numbers. So obviously, before you do anything here, I would take a look at what dates you're looking at. So right now I've selected February and March. However, you can change from here just by selecting here. You also have some presets here. And also, if you want, you can compare two dates to each other. So if you select here, compare, you have some presets or you can also just select from here. You see, you have two different um, sections here and the orange slash yellow kind of is the, what are you comparing with? That's the past date usually. And if I apply this, you'll see that the data changes and you have the dates here uh, quite clearly. In this way, you, it's easy to compare uh, dates to each other. Just to make it simpler, I'm just gonna disable this. So, and then let's take a look at the ta table. So what does this tell us? Well, this is our most popular uh, page by sessions. If you click on any of these, it will give you more information about that metric but also you can sort them if you click on this little arrow. Now there's still so much information here and I like to just focus on this one, classic plus collectible. Let's, let's uh, filter. So there's this search field. If I uh, type here and hit enter, now it'll filter out by those words. So you see that's the only uh, URL that has that. Okay, now we can focus on this and we can see, hey, we have these metrics here, sessions, users, all of this. Now, this tutorial is really short and I don't have time to go through all of this, but if you want a cheat sheet and explanation of what each of them means, you can just grab it. The link will be in the description and this way you have an easy way to always look up what do they mean because sometimes when you click on these, they don't really explain what they mean. But this is where you basically look at the data and you can also update what you see here. And later on, when you get more comfortable with J4, you can also add different metrics here. You can remove some that you don't like and add the ones you want. And you can do it. There, there will be a little pen icon here if you have the rights. For example, here on my website, I have it here. So I could now update this report. Sometimes when you look at this landing page, for example, I want to add another dimension here. And I can click on this little plus and I can add secondary dimension. And in this case, I want to add something called source. And I like to look at the session source slash medium. If I click on it, you can see that here, this is where people came from to this specific page. So we have referral traffic from this website. And then here we have also a uh, Twitter. This is also referral traffic. And we have here email, and this is the campaign name. So, so you can start seeing where do we get this traffic. And then also if you, Come here, you have some of these dimensions have this drop down. If you select purchase from there, it's just going to filter out this data, this specific column by purchase events. This is what we want to know. This is how many purchases we got from these individual pages broken down by source medium. Same thing here. If we select purchase, we're going to see the conversion rate for this specific uh, page. Now, I also want to mention that you can here, there's also pagination. So sometimes you have a lot of rows here. Uh, by default, it just shows 10, so you can change that to 250. Now, unfortunately, every time you change the reports, you will need to set that again. And then one more thing I want to show you that we have here filtering options. So if I choose a filter from here, I can build a quick filter. Let's say I want to see only mobile traffic. I'm going to just type in device category. This is how Google Analytics calls it. And here exact matches. And now we can select mobile. This means there's an apply button here. It's just a bit hidden. This means this report is now filtered by mobile traffic only. So all of these numbers that we see is uh, filtered and you can see the filter here. You can also, instead of just filtering, you could remove it and then add comparison. For example, we could do the same comparison. Uh, these are presets, but basically we could do mobile traffic and the desktop traffic. And don't worry, you can also add your own comparisons here and you can create a new one from here. And if I click now on apply, I just want to show you how it looks like. You can see that these two are uh, now applied. So mobile traffic, web traffic, and orange one is mobile. 
and now we can see hey we have much more mobile traffic than web traffic which makes sense that's kind of the case nowadays and this way you can just easily compare data to each other and this is the traffic acquisition report and here i just want to show you that some of the reports give you the option to change the primary dimension so instead of looking at the channel groups you can look at source and medium and source platform this can this kind of depends what the report you're looking at and by the way the channel grouping is really important part of ga4 basically ga takes uh the, the, all the traffic and depending where they came from like email or search engines it groups them into uh, different buckets so if you want to learn uh, what those buckets mean then you can just check out the video here in the top right corner there's a separate tutorial just on this okay now you're familiar with ga4 reports but to get actionable insights from the data you need to know how to turn the data into insights that's why you should watch this video next where i'll share my easy six-step system to turn data into insights